Ibsen is considered to be the, the father of realism. I suppose you can support that argument for what it's worth. His plays often considered quite controversial when published in the morally stringent 19th century were uh, and continue to be widely discussed just that even beyond the uh, academic setting. But the father of realism? I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. Let's look again at the actual conditions of realism. Realism came about partly as a response to new social artistic conditions. It began in France and by 1860 had some general precepts. One, truth resides in material objects and is verified through science. Two, the scientific method, observation would solve everything. And three, human problems were the highest concern of science. Art, uh, according to the realist view, had its purpose to better mankind. Drama was to involve the direct observation of human behavior, and it was to deal with everyday life and problems as subjects. Ibsen's plays attacked society's value and dealt with unconventional subjects within the form of the well-made play. Remember the three unities? Ibsen perfected the formula, and by using a familiar formula, he made his plays with very shocking subject matters acceptable. Exposition in his plays uh, was motivated. There were causally related scenes, inner psychological motivations. Uh, the environment had influence on the characters' personalities. And all the th things the characters did and all the things the characters used revealed their socioeconomic milieu. Ibsen became a model for later realistic writers. Among the subjects addressed by Ibsen in his plays are euthanasia, the role of women, war and business, and syphilis. But the play, A Dollhouse. While I don't personally care for it, I, I, and I'd rather not have to sit through it again, I can still find something useful in it. So we read it. We don't have to like everything we read or see. We can find things that teach us something about the human condition, even in the midst of the most unpleasant of places. And knowing about the human condition prepares us to meet reality, no matter what it throws at us, even if that reality is virtual. But before I get into what I think Ibsen has that is useful in a dollhouse, I need to reiterate a little about the melodrama. Because even the father of realism and the maker of the well-made play relied on the appeal of the good old-fashioned, crowd-pleasing melodrama form. The plot is based on melodrama structure. The unworldly wife, Nora, constantly belittled by her husband Torvald as his starling and squirrel has forged her father's signature without realizing the significance of her crime. An unscrupulous banker blackmails her, but afterwards, after revealing the forgery to Torvald, the blackmailer undergoes a change of heart and releases her from her debt to him. So in this play, we have a series of plot devices. The letter trick, the lost lover trick, the secrets revealed trick. All of these were common in melodramas of the period. Where a dollhouse differs from other melodramas and bends toward realism and maybe even naturalism is at the very end. Nora refuses to allow a conventional happy ending. Sit down, Torvald. Nora says, we have a lot to talk over. Their debate about marriage dominates the final act. 
Nora complains that she has been a dull wife to Torvald and declares that she will leave him. Then Nora abandons her husband and her children. So what is useful in this play? I'm sure you'll find your own useful bits, but for me it comes down to this. The play asks the question, who gets to make me? Nora is defined by her husband Torvald as a bird or a squirrel, so she flits about bubbly and carefree at the beginning of the play. She's a mother, but a mother in a situation of wealth, so she has someone else to rear her three children while she spends her time dreaming of things to buy. Torvald is defined by his job. Christine is a rejected wife in financial trouble. Krogstad is the villainous banker. Dr. Rank is defined by his illness and his ill-placed desire for Nora. The only character to change is Nora, and she goes from who she is at the beginning to being someone who drops her identity like an unwanted cloak and then walks naked out the front door. So let's return to the central question. Who gets to define us? Nora allows cultural expectations and by extension her husband to define her. Torvald is also defined by cultural expectations and his employers. Krogstad is defined by his job and so on. So we find that there are external forces that limit who we are. And if we do not forcefully define ourselves, those external forces become the default mechanism that creates the you that is you. What are some of those external forces? Well, like I just mentioned, culture, job, significant other, parent, club, virtual influencers, fads, fashions, ideologies, religions, and teachers even. These forces can come from anywhere. But for Nora and a doll's house, the externally constructed facade she wore was deadly. And the value of this play, I think, is that it reminds us of how important it is to be an authentic person of our own making. And that sometimes the masks we wear can kill us. <laughs>